and state media concepts social media podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concept Social Media Podcast. It's simple, it's simple, such a sad song. The one that, the one that we rely on. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, brought to you today by Care Of, the vitamin service that brings personalized vitamins directly to your door for a limited time only. If you go to TakeCareOf.com and enter the promo code SOCIAL, S-O-C-I-A-L, you will receive 25% off of your first order. And we'll be talking more about Care Of at the first break. So welcome to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. As I said, I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy to be with you on this Monday. Um, Beginning of a week, things are so far going okay. It's the beginning of June. It's the beginning of a lot of things. So I hope that your June is going well so far. I hope that your week is going well so far. I had a very busy day, but it was busy in a good way, which is always nice. I have crazy allergies right now, so if I sound croaky, I apologize. I weeded yesterday and um, I've been asthmatic ever since, so I sound like a, a wheezy, obscene phone call. Lucky you, listeners. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep my breathing in check during this podcast. I will. I will try to only breathe deeply heavily and annoyingly during commercial breaks how's that sound i'll I'll do my best i promise so we have lots of social media news to cover for this episode starting with uh new developments in the story of singer sizza and her experience a few weeks ago which she tweeted about um about her experience in a sephora in california in calabasas she tweeted that um she she tweeted this on april 30th lmao sandy sephora location 614 calabasas called security to make sure i wasn't stealing we had a long talk you have a blessed day sandy uh, so she said that she was racially profiled and stopped by security officers at a Sephora store in Calabasas. She actually once worked as a skin consultant for Sephora and is a uh, spokesmodel for Rihanna's Fenty brand, which is sold exclusively at Sephora. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's just wow. She did receive a tweeted apology from Sephora that said, you are part of the Sephora family and we are committed to ensuring every member of our community feels welcomed and included at our stores. Um, Rihanna then, is, whose real name is Robin Fenty, sent a gift card and a handwritten note um, to Sizzle that read, go buy your Fenty beauty in peace, sis. One love, Rihanna, which Sizzle then shared on her Instagram story. So in response to this, in addition to the uh, respond- response of the apologetic tweet, Sephora is closing its stores, of, closing, sorry, excuse me, more than 400 stores on the morning of June 5th to host inclusion workshops for all of its employees, according to a statement that was posted on the company's website. Sephora said in the statement that it believes in championing, championing, championing all beauty, Uh, celebrating differences and building a community where diversity is expected. The cosmetics giant will take a few hours out to train its 16,000 employees about the brand's values. Along with retail stores, the company-wide training will also include employees in Sephora's distribution centers and corporate offices, according to Retail Dive. Um, The move more closely aligns Sephora with its parent company's tagline, We Belong to Something Beautiful, which has been in the works for more than a year. The temporary store closures come during a time when... Consumers are unfortunately becoming increasingly aware and adverse, averse, 
to the discrimination that seems to be happening everywhere all the time while shopping, eating out, grabbing a coffee, etc. You'll remember that Starbucks closed last summer, I believe, to do uh, training for its employees after the police were called for two black men having a business meeting in Starbucks. The yeah, it's, it's getting out of hand, so it, it's probably good that more companies are doing more trainings, but it also makes me sad that it has to be done. Um, yeah, just really kind of breaks my heart a little bit that we have to have this training that we... That, that it's necessary. It is necessary, though, because the world, of course, is not perfect, so let's get that training. Let's uh, Let's get people to treat each other like humans and not just jump to conclusions based on so many different factors. Anyway, that is the update after the story originally, uh, the end of April. Now they are having, Sephora is having diversity training. In um, a previous episode, I mentioned that IHOP made a announcement, a, a teaser announcement that they are changing their name again. And people were less than impressed, so they uh, sent out a message on May 28th that they, you know, last year, let's let's just back a track a little bit, um, last year they briefly changed their name to IHOB. Again, it just sounds like you have a cold or allergies um, because of they were, they were doing it to, to promote the burgers that they were putting out, but people were not impressed. So... Um, now they, as I said, they, they, they tweeted last week, um, I hop with a small P instead of a capital P and they say, what could the P be? Find out June 3rd. Well, June 3rd is here and, um, the pancake chain has said it's changing things up with burgers again, but it's going to be naming those new burgers pancakes so as to not cause any sort of confusion or backlash. I'm already confused. Um, you can't just rename burgers pancakes and think that we're not going to comment on it. <laughs> um, so today, IHOP announced three new menu items, and they're all burgers, but with pancake names. Okay. Um, one of the new quote-unquote pancakes, the big IHOP pancake, includes an actual pancake sandwiched between two meat patties. Okay. Uh, there are also two steak burgers, the garlic butter pancake, which is topped with smoky bacon and a bunch of classic fixings, and then the loaded Philly pancake, which has sautéed onions and peppers, plus lots of melty cheese sauce. Okay. Um, and a quote... Brad Haley, chief marketing executive, executive, oh my gosh, I can't talk tonight. Brad Haley, chief marketing officer at IHOP said, when we launched our new ultimate steak burgers last year, what better way to show the world that we take our burgers as seriously as we take our pancakes than by announcing that we'd be changing our name to IHOP temporarily. That was hard for a lot of people to accept, he said, since they'd always known IHOP primarily as the breakfast and pancake place. So they took to social media to tell us, often in no uncertain terms, to stay in our lane and stick to pancakes. He continued, so we're listening to the internet this year by calling our new steak burgers pancakes. And so many people asked us why we didn't have a pancake burger last year, that we've even added a pancake with a pancake in it. The big IHOP pancake burger. Oh man. So you can only imagine the responses that are coming out of this. Now, um, to be fair, the marketing ploy last year did cause a stir and, you know, it, it did work and, you know, news outlets picked it up. It was talked about, it was um, tweeted about, it was talked about on other social media. So, um, yes, but people still have lots of, um, comments because now we know that the p still stands for pancakes but the pancakes are actually burgers and it's um it's all very confusing i don't know i hop i i don't know what to say on this one i'm not saying you shouldn't have burgers because you know lots of pancake or lots of breakfast places also have other menu items you can still just get breakfast all day but this whole change in your name and trying to make it a thing I guess it does get attention because negative attention is attention. Um, 
it seems a little strange to me though. So uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what the reactions are. And there may be a follow up on this one as well. Don't know. It is time though to take our first break of the podcast. Before we take that break, I do want to talk to you about Care Of, that personalized vitamin um, delivery service. I mentioned before that I'm having uh, trouble with allergies and asthma, etc. So I have uh, I have health concerns just like everybody else has health concerns and I'm always looking for things that will help in turn, you know, whatever it is in terms of my dietary needs. Well, what can I what can I take that may or may not help X Y and Z? Um, instead of going to the supplement aisle and staring blankly at the wall of vitamins in front of me, instead, I went to TakeCareOf.com and took their easy five-minute quiz. It asked me questions about my health goals, my nutrition goals, things that I'm concerned about. You know, am I getting proper sleep? And uh, Do I think I'm getting proper nutrition, et cetera? Um, and then it the, then the site gave me a personalized recommendation for vitamins and protein powder to fit the things that I said were my top health concerns. The great thing is, is you go, you take the easy five minute quiz. They, they give you your, um, your recommendation. You can supplement that recommendation with uh, whatever you want from their catalog. You can go through and see what else they have that might sound uh, like it might be of use to you. And then they ship it right to your door. You can do it all in your pajamas and then you, you don't even have to go to the store. It's wonderful. And a new thing that they are doing now is that all of their packaging is compostable, which I think is great. You um, are concerned with your own health. Now you can, uh, and you're, you're working to take care of it. Now you can do your part to take care of the health of the planet as well by uh, using Take Care Of and their compostable packaging. So if you are interested in trying this service, just go to TakeCareOf.com. And for a limited time only, when you enter the promo code SOCIAL, C O excuse me, S-O-C-I-A-L, you will receive 25% off of your first order. Again, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter the promo code SOCIAL to get that 25% off. We will go ahead and take that first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking about stories that are trending today on social media. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, and I will be right back. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Before the break, we were talking about Sephora and IHOP in the news for very different reasons, although maybe reasons that make you roll your eyes for, um, again, very different reasons. But <laughs> we're going we're gonna to move to some different types of social media news, things that are trending. Um, for instance, today, uh, the new, the, 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 the Jeopardy um, the Jeopardy winning streak has ended. James Holzhauer's um, Jeopardy winning streak ended in a final round thriller, leaving him just shy of former champion Ken Jennings' $2.5 million record. So, of course, you know, we knew the streak had to come to an end at some point. People were waiting to see if he would uh, make that make or break that 2.5 million record. Um, he lost after winning 32 consecutive games, leaving him in second place for the show's all time highest winners of um, the amount of money that they've won. Word of this shocking defeat started spreading on Sunday when a leaked clip from the episode circulated on social media. Um, the the episode actually aired today, Monday, but the 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 um, 
The clip was leaked yesterday on Sunday. In a surprising twist, Holzauer, who often bludgeoned his opponents by doubling and even tripling their totals, lost by more than $22,000, even though he responded correctly in final jeopardy, according to a clip obtained by NBC News. Challenger Emma Betcher, a librarian at the University of Chicago, dethroned the Las Vegas pro sports gambler, who many expected to smash that uh, that record of $2.5 million that was set by Ken Jennings over 74 games in 2004. Um, Holzauer is quoted as saying, I lost to a really top-level competitor. She played a perfect game, and that was what it took to beat me. Betcher led going into the final round with $26,600. Holtzauer had $23,400, according to the video clip. The final clue read the line, a great reckoning in a little room in As You Like It, is usually taken to refer to this author's premature death. All three contestants got the correct answer, 16th century English playwright Christopher Marlowe. But this time, it was Betcher who went big, wagering $20,201, bringing her final total to 46801 Holtzauer bet an uncharacteristically small amount, just $1,399. He must not have been hugely confident of his answer. So he finished with $24,799 for the game and was awarded $2,000 for coming in second place, which brought his total purse to $2,464,216. Obviously, the crowd, you know, was stunned. Um, Even Alex Trebek seemed a little taken back, (laughs) saying, oh gosh, what a game, oh my gosh. (laughs) Holtzauer uh, apparently took the loss graciously. He walked over to Betcher and gave her a high five, and he. Uh, but he's definitely been a a pop culture phenomenon, a social media phenomenon in recent weeks for his his strategy in the game. So pretty amazing, and uh, it's it's got to be it's got to be interesting to be the person who who beats the person that's that's been on that huge streak. Um, he did James Holtz out or did did tweet excuse me my kid cried about the possibility of her dad losing so I told her we could have a party the day after it inevitably happens now she cries when I win <laughs> that's very cute uh, her, her, his daughter is four um, so that is very sweet I hope they have a wonderful celebration and a streak comes to an end. Speaking of parenting, Pink posted a, a video on her Instagram of her at her daughter Willow's eighth birthday doing um, a little acrobatic um, flip. They, 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 I don't even know what you'd call it, but a little acrobatic move. She posted a, a video and her quote said, when mom embarrasses you at your own birthday party, um, thanks at TMPTS Academy, <laughs> sorry, uh, for the best birthday party ever. And thanks Instagram for knowing exactly what leggings I needed to buy. <laughs> So uh, apparently Willow seemed slightly embarrassed by her mom's videoing that move or maybe doing that move. I don't know. Uh, Her mom, Pink, did say that that Willow seemed slightly mortified. But the uh, post did rack up 800,000 likes, of course. She also posted um, a tribute to Willow on her eighth birthday with several baby photos that are very, very sweet. And uh, Dad Carrie Hart also posted a sweet post about his daughter's eighth birthday. So that's lovely. I always like, um, I just always like those sweet moments in families, even if they are, you know, obviously there's some thought behind what what celebrities share on social media but um i i do i do like those sweet moments and uh <laughs> admitting that you know you've just embarrassed your kid well that's got to be inevitable when your parents are fav- are famous right i'm i'm going to guess yes it's got to be inevitable in some sadder news from social media it was um announced today that actor paul darrow has passed away if you don't know who that is um he died at 78 he is best known for his role as care avon in 
the sci-fi BBC series Blake's Seven. He um, died following a short illness. Now, if you've never heard of Blake's Seven, you um, probably aren't alone. It's uh, kind of... Man, if it weren't for Blake Seven, there wouldn't be a lot of sci-fi shows. It was in the 70s. It um, very. I've, I've only seen parts of it. My husband has watched the entire thing. He remembered watching it as a kid. He found it again as a, an adult. He loves it. Um, and it's it's just this this really great classic BBC sci-fi show, kind of the precursor of Doctor Who. In fact, at one point there was talk of there being a Doctor Who um, Blake 7 crossover. I don't know if that was ever really supposed to happen or if it was just rumored, but um, uh, while he was known for his role on Blake 7, he also appeared in more than 200 television shows, including Doctor Who, The Saint Z cars, Emmerdale, Hollyoaks, and Little Britain. So um, he did die at the age of seventy-eight. Um, he oh he was married to actress Janet Lee's Price. Them they were together for forty-eight years before she died in twenty twelve. So there have been lots of tributes to Darrow on social media today as people are tweeting their thoughts, their memories, their, you know, their reactions, etc. People were um, reacting, of course, to a lot, excuse me, a lot of comments on Blake Seven, how much that show meant to them, how much his character meant to them or, or their reactions to his death. So, um, as always, there's many celebrity deaths during a year and it's 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 always it's always sad whenever a new one is announced. So we are thinking of Paul Darrow's friends and family today as they remember him, as they celebrate his life and mourn his passing. And maybe this will mean that uh, Blake Seven is going to get a, a, a resurgence of people being interested in it because it definitely was iconic for its time. Um, it's very dated, <laughs> which is fine because it was, it was, it was done in the seventies. So I, it, it should be very, very dated. That's just all there's, all there is to it. Um, one more story of trending news, and that is there is a photo of Steph Curry and Clay Thompson sitting on the bench that looks photoshopped. Um, it looks like. One, it, it looks like Clay Thompson is somewhat normal size, and uh, they took the picture of Steph Curry and just shrunk it by several percentages because <laughs> it's hilarious. It does look photoshopped. I mean, I realize there's a height difference between them, but this picture is just ridiculous in its hilarity. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely Google it and look at it because it 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 just Thompson is towering over this tiny Curry. Um, and it really does look fake. But it turns out that uh, th- th- all it is, it's not photoshopped. Clay Thompson just happens to be sitting on a very tall cushion. And so it makes him look even bigger. That There's already a height difference between the two. And then when he sits on this very tall cushion, it makes for an extremely funny and ridiculous picture. If you are following basketball at all, then you know that the Golden State Warriors are in the NBA Finals with the Toronto Raptors. After last night's game, they are now tied one to one. Um, the the Warriors won last night 109 to 104 over the Raptors, and they are now headed back to California for the next game in the series. But this picture just made me giggle a little bit, and apparently it was creating reactions from all around the internet and social media. It is time for our second break of the podcast. When we come back, we will be talking about some news involving social media and visas. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. 
From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. We have talked about Sephora, we've talked about IHOP, we've talked about some of the things that are trending on social media today, and now I want to turn to a story um, about Instead of social media news, it's news about social media, <laughs> if that makes sense. Rather than news that is trending on social media, this is news that is um, about social media. And uh, this comes from the New York Times that has reported that the U.S. is requiring social media information for from visa applications. Um, this is a New York Times article from yesterday by Sandra E. Garcia, uh, who states that visa applicants to the United States are required to submit any information about social media accounts they have used in the past five years under a State Department policy that started on Friday. Such account information would give the government access to photos, locations, dates of birth, dates of milestones, and other personal data commonly shared on social media. Um, there is a a uh, quote from the State Department in a statement that was issued uh, saying, we already request certain contact information, travel history, family member information, and previous address from all these applicants. We are constantly working to find mechanisms to improve our screening process to protect U.S. citizens while supporting legitimate travel to the United States. In March of 2017, President Trump asked the Secretary of State, the Attorney General, the Secretary of Homeland Security, and the Director of National Intelligence to put in effect a uniform baseline for screening and vetting standards and procedures. Uh, this is according to a memo published in the Federal Register. So requiring information about the social media accounts of visa applic applicants was part of that. And the move represents a step up from a September 2017 measure in which the Homeland Security Department proposed and enacted a regulation calling for the surveillance of social media use of all immigrants, including naturalized citizens. During the Obama administration, the State Department began to ask visa applicants to voluntarily submit their social media information. Um, According to Alora Mukherjee, a director of the Immigrants' Rights Clinic at Columbia Law School, who said, uh, uh, she said on Sunday of this latest development, this seems to be part and parcel of the same effort to have an extraordinarily broad surveillance of citizens and non-citizens. Given the scope of the surveillance uh, um, efforts, it is hard to find a rational basis for the broad surveillance the Department of State and the Department of Homeland Security have been doing for almost two years. The added requirement could dissuade visa applicants who may see it as a psychological barrier to enter the United States. So you can only imagine what kind of information that we you could get from this because our social media accounts link us to places, they link us to people, they link us to, um, you know, our associations. Uh, I, I mean, you think of it as, as your friends list, but... You know, I've got people on my Facebook account that I've never even met. They're just friends of friends, and it's interesting how those connections happen, but you, you can only imagine the amount of information that could be gleaned from social media accounts. It's... Um, it's, inf it's, it's an interesting development, and people are concerned. Um, they're concerned that this kind of requirement will result in suspicion of surveillance of travelers and their networks of friends, families, and business associates. Um, also, that the government, that there was an addition that the government has failed to explain how it would use this information. 
Um, the same quote goes on further. The government has been unable to prove that social media can provide reliable indications that identify a security threat. Um, in the absence of any such indicators, what we've seen domestically and abroad is government officials penalizing people's speech, religious affiliation, and other conduct. So I'm curious what you might think of this development. It's definitely got people concerned. It definitely is a different sort of, I mean, I guess I just never even thought about filling out an application and giving my social media accounts on that. Just, I don't even know. I mean, I, I guess I don't travel a lot, but it hadn't even occurred to me that that would be a thing. And yes, you can get a lot of information from social media, but you can also get a lot of false information from social media. I mean, we're always talking about how social media does not present the true picture of a person and their lives. So, I don't know. It's 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 a slippery slope, I think. But also a slippery slope that could definitely lead to not always complete if sometimes incorrect information about people. Um so yeah, the world has become much much smaller. It has become in many ways more I want to say more open, but that's not exactly what I mean. Just the, 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 the amount of information that you can find out about people that we put, that we, we real, that we voluntarily put out there through our social media. It's, uh, it's still new enough that we're still thinking through these things, trying to figure out what it all means, where our privacy rights lie. And is something that's definitely going to be, have to be worked out as we continue, because the internet's not going away. Social media is not going away. So how are we going to find that balance between um, what we put online, our privacy, etc.? A very interesting development. So curious as to what else you've heard about this, what you think about it, um, who, who you know who might be affected by it, etc. If you want to leave us a comment, we'd love to hear it. Comment on our social media. You can comment on the on this episode, uh, or wherever you listen to it, or you can, um, especially like, and follow us on social media, like, give us a great, give us a good review. We, we'd really appreciate the good reviews. If you could, that'd be, that'd be awesome. <laughs> it really, it definitely helps us out. So follow us, like us, comment, etc. Um, we would very much appreciate you. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for listening to this episode of the GSMC social media news podcast. Please join me again next time when we find out what's trending in the world. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program